Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we have the latest on the Pontiki prep plant collapse in Martin County. And an area of southern Kentucky received a new weather radar system after a much needed update. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Olivia Calfee. The time is 631 on November 3rd. Now let's check in with Chief Forecaster Brandon Robinson for a look at your forecast this morning. And Brandon, we are feeling that chill once again, but it, it's warmer than it was yesterday morning and it's going to continue warming up throughout the day. Here's the thing, take it while it lasts because we're going to get to a point where it's going to be cold every morning and it's going to be bitterly cold. So just enjoy the warmth while it's still around. That's what I say. All right, Olivia, yes, we're looking outside the WIMT studios. 32 out that way this morning. A little colder over at the Hazard Airport up at Wendell Ford, but you can see other areas. It's a big swing this morning. We've got 23, our cold spot down in Jonesville. Also, Clintwood just drops 23, and you've got 40 at Jackson. So 20s, 30s, 40s out there across the region this morning. Big difference, though, from this time yesterday. Double digits warmer in Moorhead, Logan, Jackson, and pretty close there in Somerset as well as Hazard and Pikeville this morning. So just kind of remember that it is going in the right direction, at least for now. 63 this afternoon, no rain, all sunshine, very warm temperatures going into today for this time of the year especially. We'll talk about your extended forecast coming up here in just a little bit. Olivia. All right, thank you, Brandon. The search and rescue operation at the old Pontiki prep plant in Martin County continues Days after a catastrophic collapse, two men are trapped. At least one is dead, but even his body has not been recovered yet. As WYMT's Madison Carmouche reports, we now know who they are. The rescue and recovery effort continues for the two men working inside the old prep plant. As I understand, uh, both names have, have been released. Uh, the fellow that, that we know that is deceased is named Billy. Billy Billy Ray Daniels, better known as Bo Daniels. Uh, the gentleman uh, that is still there, that we're still searching for, his name is Alvin Neese. Kentucky Emergency Management Director Jeremy Slinker says that this is a statewide effort as they sift through the debris. Our Energy Environment Cabinet Secretary reached out to me today and uh, Deputy Secretary and said, would these photos that we have on file help? And you know, and they had a lot of inside photos. So for us, then it gives you a better look for those that hadn't been, what was the inside made of? So Slinker says it is now a slow process of removing layers of rubble. All other measures had been exhausted. Sure. Dogs, cameras, listening devices, and people. All that had been uh, exhausted. And now we're just to, there's no way to see in those voids that are blocked off right now or barricaded without machinery to take it apart. Martin County Judge Executive Lon Lafferty says the search efforts will continue around the clock as the family of Alvin Neese continues to hope for a miracle. Unfortunately, we all hoped that we would give you some information that we had located the missing uh, person and uh, we just, we're not there yet, as the judge mentioned. Uh, met with the family a lot today. Officials say the family of Daniels was able to come to the scene and begin their grieving process. In Martin County, Madison Carmouche, WYMT Mountain News. There will be another news conference this morning at 11 and reporters will be taken to the site of the collapse for the first time. One church has become a central hub for first responders and others to get food and support. A deacon at Buck Branch United Baptist Church says the community has come together to help those looking for answers. We're really blessed to be in the community that we're in that shows love. You know, I mean, we come together because uh, we're Christians and to lift the name of the Lord up, not the name of the church, anyone that can pray, will pray, needs to pray for the family and for the uh, people up there that's trying to recover the two guys. 
Local officials met privately with family members at the church yesterday afternoon before taking them to the scene. The University of Kentucky issued a crime bulletin last night for a sexual assault. The school says the assault reportedly happened yesterday in the victim's dorm room in an on-campus residence hall. They say the victim and suspect are both UK students and the suspect is known to the victim. UK police are now investigating. They say anyone who has been a victim of sexual assault or any other crime should come forward. One person is in jail after a drug bust in Lee County, Virginia. The incident happened Wednesday at a McDonald's in Pennington Gap. Once police arrived at the scene, the suspect gave them permission to search his car. Afterwards, officers found a pistol under the driver's seat, along with nearly three and a half pounds of what they believe to be meth and other items. Marshall Dell Jones is facing multiple charges, including possessing drugs with the intent to distribute. In Laurel County, the Sheriff's Office is asking for help finding a person who went missing. 33-year-old Brittany Beckley was last seen on September 1st off West Cumberland Gap Parkway. Officials say she is 5 foot 8 and 200 pounds with blonde hair. If you have any information, you were asked to contact the Sheriff's Office at 606-878-7000 or message the Sheriff's Office on Facebook. A part of southern Kentucky that local officials say is underserved in warning systems has a new weather radar system. The new radar unit is on top of a water tower in Jamestown in Russell County. The system is part of a partnership between Climate Vision and Russell County government, and they say it will provide needed warning information to local residents and the many tourists that visit Lake Cumberland. And seeing the radar on top of this tower here, knowing that it's going to help to protect the community from obviously uh, changing weather patterns that have become a lot more volatile in recent years. Officials say it will fill in a gap between current next rad sites. Climavision is also installing a radar system in northern Kentucky. This is their first one in Kentucky. One flood survivor in Knott County is keeping her faith as she moves into her repaired home. Brenda Sloan's home was damaged in the July 2022 flood. Since then, she's dealt with several issues from having no back porch to her floor nearly caving in. But the Christian Appalachian Project was able to help, and now she is in her renovated home. When they tore the carpet up out of it, you won't believe it. But I can show you, they brought me a necklace that was in that carpet, and it had the word faith. Sloan says it has been hard dealing with everything with her house on top of getting into a bad car crash back in April. However, she is thrilled to be back in her repaired home. Governor Andy Bashir cast his vote yesterday morning in Frankfurt. Later, he joined other elected officials in Lexington, getting the word out about early voting. Governor Bashir says these early voting days are a great opportunity for Kentuckians. Today's message from everyone up here is a nonpartisan encouragement for every single person out there, regardless of who you're going to vote for. Get out and vote and vote early. Early voting was expanded in the state back in 2021 with the bipartisan House Bill 574. And Attorney General and Republican nominee for Governor Daniel Cameron was campaigning in Western Kentucky yesterday. Cameron says he will vote on Tuesday and be in Louisville for his election night party. Both candidates' campaign tours will continue into the weekend. And in-person no-excuse absentee voting continues today across Kentucky. It started Thursday and runs through Saturday. Election day is next Tuesday, November 7th. Polls open at 6 next Tuesday morning and close at 6 that evening. A list of polling locations in each county is available at govote.ky.gov. But as early voting is other underway, some clerks are facing a big issue. They are still in need of election workers. Clark County Clerk Michelle Turner says she and her staff are trying to come up with a game plan if they do not have enough people to work on election day. 
She says they have never had to shut the office down before. On the flip side, Bourbon County Clerk Santana Wilson says they have an abundance of people who have expressed interest in working the election. Coming up on 641, and if you want to dodge the raindrops next week on Election Day, today and tomorrow, best days to go vote out there because sunshine abound. A little chilly this morning across parts of the region from 23 in Jonesville to 40 there in Jackson. So again, a lot of 20s and 30s out there this morning. Those ridges a little bit warmer for us today. Out the door forecast, lots of sunshine. It's going to be a beautiful day. Temperatures top out in the low 60s early this afternoon. Olivia. Thanks, Brandon, and thank you for joining us. The time is now 641, still to come on Mountain News this morning. We'll take a look at how daylight savings time can affect your mental health.